Hi there, in this video we're going to be asking the question, what is a survey? And I'm going to take you through all the different types of survey that you'll encounter. Whether you call them a survey or a study, these words are pretty much interchangeable. If you're working uh, in medicine, you will call it a study, uh, but outside medicine it will probably be called a, a survey. But it doesn't matter, the words are just interchangeable uh, and I think we're just going to get into it now. Okay, so what is a survey? A survey is a research method used for collecting data to gain information and insights on a particular topic of interest. In other words, we observe the real world to gather information, convert the information into data, analyze the data, and interpret the results to tell us what the information means. Once we understand what the information means, we can use it to predict the future to make gains in some way. And what I mean here by the word gain is for either financial profit or a scientific discovery, a better treatment of an illness or some other definition. Now there are only actually two different types of survey. There's a cross-sectional survey or a longitudinal survey. Breaking these down, a cross-sectional survey is used to study a topic of interest at a specific point in time, and we use these studies to get a quick and cheap summary. Let's have a little example. We can ask the question in a survey, do you have lung cancer, of which the answer will either be yes or no for each participant. We can gather, we can ask that question of lots of people, gather all the data together and we can analyze it and visualize it. And what we will get is something that looks like this. We get a bar chart where we have a proportion of people that have lung cancer and a proportion of people that do not have lung cancer. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We can dig a little bit deeper than that and we can, uh, we can split it up by gender so that we see uh, what proportion of men have lung cancer and which proportion of women have lung cancer. And then we can see if there's a difference between them. And we can do this by, by many other variables. You can split it up by age or by lots of other things. But basically, uh, if you're doing a cross-sectional survey, uh, you're looking into um, the descriptive statistics of a, a subject. It's, it's a quick and, uh, and cheap way of trying to get uh, insights into your data that might help you to build a hypothesis that you can then test with some new data. So that's a cross-sectional study. A longitudinal study. Now these are used to study a topic of interest over a period of time. And we use these studies to examine cause and effect, or at least possible cause and effect. So of course, if we're looking at time, cause must precede effect. And for cause, we can ask questions such as, for how long have you smoked? And you can give them uh, options. I, I, a non-smoker, I've smoked for less than 10 years, or I've smoked for more than 10 years. And the effect of that, we can ask the question, do you have lung cancer, yes or no? And by asking a question, by, by structuring questions like this, we, can, uh, we, we build time into the study. And that's what we mean by a longitudinal study, its effect over time. And once you've got the, the data, you can then uh, analyze it uh, and get something like this out the other end so that you can, um, you can have a visualization of uh, the proportions of people that never smoked, those that smoked for uh, less than 10 years and those that smoked for more than 10 years, and you can get uh, trends over time. Now, of course, this is a very uh, simple analysis and it's still just descriptive statistics and we can go into some more detailed statistics, uh, which we will do later on in the course. But for the moment, I just wanted you to understand that in longitudinal studies, time is built in to the questions so that uh, you can examine possible cause and effect. Now, just to complicate things a little bit more, there are two types of longitudinal surveys. There's case control surveys and cohort 
surveys. Let's have a look at the case control study. What we're doing here is we're going to compare when an outcome is present to when an outcome is not present. When an outcome is present, we call that the case. These are our cases. People have lung cancer or whatever it is that we're looking at. And the, um, we're also looking at when the outcome is not present. And this is our control. So this is where, uh, where the, the patient does not have lung cancer. So we can look at all those people that have lung cancer, all those people that do not have lung cancer, and we can make a direct comparison between all the different features that we have in the case study and in the case uh, cohort and the control cohort. And from there, uh, we can make that comparison and we can, we can gain some insights into uh, what it is that we're trying to find. Uh, the outcome in, in, in the sense of this con case control survey, it might be a disease. It might be a sale, if we're talking about uh, um, the sale of I iPads or whatever. Or it might be an opinion. You're asking people their opinion about, uh, oh, I don't know, politics. What, which particular uh, political party do they do they follow? These are these are outcomes. Okay, so in a case control study, we are comparing when the outcome is present to when the outcome is not present. This is a case control study, uh, and basically what we do is we we take all the data for uh, when the outcome is present, and we take all the data for when the outcome is not present. So all of those cases, all of those people that have the outcome, all of their data, you put it to one side. And all those people that do not have the outcome, all of their data, you put that to one side. And for each of these two groups, groups of data, you can look at, at uh, the particular variables to see where the cause is present and where the cause is not present. And then you can make a comparison between these groups between these uh, these features uh, to see if there is a difference. And when you see a difference, that might uh, be the thing that you're trying to find. Now, in a cohort survey, we're looking here instead at where the cause is present or not present. And we're going to do a comparison between them. See, in the previous one, we talked about the effect this is about the cause, okay? So uh, the cause here might be smoking or it might be product placement or it might be an advert, but we're going to compare here where the cause is present with where the cause is not present. So just exactly as before, you take the group of people for which um, the cause is present and you take all of their features, you take the uh, all those people for which the cause is not present, all of those features, you've got two groups of data. Then you can split those groups of data by where the outcome is present to where the outcome is not present. And then you can make a comparison between them. That tries to find uh, the cause. You, you're, you're investigating the cause in, in, this, in, a, in a cohort study. Now, just to make things even more complicated, there are two types of cohort survey. There are retrospective and prospective. In a retrospective study, you're checking back into existing records to investigate cause and effect. You, effectively, you're looking backwards into the past. In a prospective survey, you're investigating cause and effect over time. So you're looking forwards into the future. So in summary, uh, the different, there are only two different types of survey. They're cross-sectional or longitudinal. The cross-sectional survey is basically just a summary of uh, the data that we've got. It's a quick and easy method of uh, doing mostly descriptive statistics to try to understand uh, the data that you've got a bit more so that you can create some kind of a hy hypothesis. Uh, if you want to look into the cause and effect, you really need a longitudinal study. Uh, you're going to, into it with more, more detail and more powerful statistics, more than just descriptive statistics. Uh, longitudinal studies themselves, there are, there are two types. There is a case control study or a cohort study. The case control study is you're looking into the effect uh, and the cohort study, you're looking into 
the cause. Uh, the cohost study itself has got two different types. It can either be prospect uh, retrospective, where you're looking into records that already exist, into the data you already have, or it can be prospective. Uh, you're looking into the future by collecting new data and analysing that, either as you're going along or when you get uh, when you've collected all the data at the end. The most important part of all of this is that whichever type of survey you're conducting, the way that you analyze them all is exactly, precisely the same. You use the same types of data, the same descriptive statistics, the same data analysis techniques, the same statistical tests. Nothing is different in any of these different types of survey. So whenever somebody says, uh, I've got this, this particular kind of survey, how do you analyse it? Well, you analyse it in the same way as you, you analyse all the other different types of survey too. And that is the most important point that I want to get across here. There may be a number of different types of survey, but the statistical tools that you're going to use to analyse them are the same, irrespective of which type of study we have got. Okay, and that's what this course is all about. The particular statistical tools that you're going to use. Okay, coming up next, we're going to have a little quiz before we move on again.